Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the pink symbol ABN AF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at talkdigitalnetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Sean Broderick, Senior Editor at WeissGroup.com. Welcome back to the show, Sean. Thanks for having me on. Sean, uh, one of the things I've noticed, we had the mega mergers in the gold sector, and now there's moves in the marijuana sector that looks like they're doing the same thing. Why is this happening right now? Well, because they can't find anything else to do with their money. I mean, uh, God forbid that the miners head out and actually spend money on exploration. I mean, uh, I think we'd all drop dead of shock if they actually did that. So they're left with some choices. One is to buy the uh, junior companies and junior explorers and, you know, hopefully the ones with the good projects, though maybe there aren't as many of them considering the mergers we're seeing now. And the other is to buy an actual producer that has kind of a deep bench of product uh, of, like, projects. And that seems to be what they are doing. And to me, this just shows the scarcity of new gold discoveries and like stuff like that. It really speaks to it. So I actually think this is bullish. So I'm sure for people working in those industries, especially the ones about to be laid off and those actually be laid off by those companies, it doesn't seem bullish at all. In Canada, they say there's a shortage of legal pot to sell. Has that, was that a problem in the U.S. when they first opened up? In the uh, states it that made it on legal? The state. Yeah. I mean, if you look at like Oregon, for example, they continue to have huge surpluses of pot. So you can get pot for, um, just dirt cheap. So it all depends where you are. California, you still have to jump through every, uh, hoop in the books to try and sell legally, which is why so many people still buy it illegally. Um, you know, it really varies state to state. One thing on having cannabis legal on a state level but not legal on the federal level is it breaks it up into individual markets they're all very different and so uh that's one thing that i think investors are dealing with now if oregon has a surplus then canada really should be looking to get it from there although uh because it's illegal federally would it be legal to cross the border absolutely not you can't even cross the border between states that's the problem i mean when i was in colorado uh Last year, I was talking to a cookie company. They actually bake all sorts of things, but I prefer to think of them as a cookie company. Um, they had a great operation uh, in Colorado, but they were going to set up a completely new operation in Nevada simply because they couldn't ship across state lines. Wow. Of course. Yes. Uh, all those federal laws about transporting things over state lines. Right. Exactly. Now, uh, taking a look at something that you think does have some promise, gold in a shaky market. Yeah, I was expecting a deeper pullback in gold. That's why we took two rounds of gold gains last week, you know, and I was actually feeling pretty good about it. But these mergers are really putting a light under the fire, or I should say a fire under the behinds of these gold stocks and actually uh, perking them up quite a bit. And also we're seeing gold stay stubbornly strong in the face of, I have to say, global macroeconomic news that is really taking a turn for the worse. We're seeing China slow down with the slowest growth it had in 28 years. We're seeing an actual recession in Italy. Germany could be next. Uh, we're seeing problems in Japan. We're seeing problems in Russia. So globally speaking, there are worries that are weighing on the market, and so that puts a bit into gold. Is Germany cheering for Britain to have a healthy Brexit because uh, Britain's maybe one of their biggest, if not their biggest, customer? Well, I'm sure that could be part of it. The other is that, you know, I think the Germans more than anyone else remember the horrible wars Europe went through. They would rather have mechanisms in place to prevent that. And, like, there are people who say, well, they can't have another war. You know, Europe's a very different place today. 
Not really. You know, I mean, things could spiral out of control. I think that's what worries the Germans. And they will put up with a lot of stuff. Also, let's face it, um, the Germans were never able to conquer Europe with tanks, but they were able to do it with banks. German banks, you know, really control much of what goes on financially over there. And so they hate to see that system break up, and uh, I don't blame them. I think there are good reasons for Britain to stick in the European Union. Uh, I can understand the view of people who want to leave, though. So, you know, it's certainly up to the people over there. It's not up to me. Good luck to them all. Well, Theresa May's last statement was uh, having a second referendum would cast doubt on uh, the validity of democracy, but what could be more democratic than another vote? Yeah, I mean, I think they should have another vote. Personally, though, I wouldn't put Theresa May in charge of anything more complicated than burying a dead goat. I mean, she's not very competent. I think that's actually part of the problem they have with this, is she really hasn't done a good job. People don't want to admit it for all sorts of reasons. But I think if, like, someone else was in charge there who actually could have moved this along better, then we wouldn't be having this conversation. It is a quandary for people over there. They were promised things about Brexit that turned out to be completely not true. That's the major problem. Uh, that still doesn't mean they can't have a Brexit. It's just going to be different than what they wanted. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to explain to people in a clear way, here's what we can get, here's why it's advantageous, and so we should go for it. Other than that, you should be backpedaling and saying, look, those guys lied to you when they sold you this Brexit deal. Let's do something else. I think what a lot of people want is the Norwegian solution, you know, where you have kind of loose affiliation with Europe, the same way Norway does. Uh, but it seems like a very bumpy road between here and there. Europe would much rather that they stick in there, you know, like a full partner. And you can't blame Europe for that either. Everybody has their own self-interest. We'll have to see how it works. Somebody has to pay for uh, Italy and Greece. So why well, not Britain? <laughs> yeah, and also, I mean, other things go wrong. You know, you can have a problem in Spain. You can have a problem in Portugal and, like, stuff like that. But we have problems of our own, much closer to home. I mean, uh, you guys up in Canada have a neighbor to the south, the United States, that can't even run its own government. I mean, it keeps shutting down. The U.S., or I should say the U.S. system, used to be the envy of the world. Who in the world would envy us now? when we can't even keep the government open. I th I think it's a shame. Um, I think it makes a mockery of our constitutional process, and it's actually very bad economically. There are things being held up in uh, customs that are not getting to the companies that need them. There are, you know, problems because we have 800,000 federal workers who aren't receiving a paycheck now, and so that weighs on a whole bunch of things. Not only them, but also food stamps won't go out. That also weighs on company where people usually spend those food stamps. There's a big kind of um, Jenga tower of, like, things that can go wrong where you keep pulling out all these different supports for the financial system. In the end, it can kind of collapse. Now, I'm not saying we'd have an economic collapse, but it certainly wouldn't look the same afterwards uh, that it looks like now. Right now, the U.S. system is coasting on momentum momentum and faith that the uh, U.S. institutions can actually get back on track. I would like to see that happen, but there is no guarantee. We'll have more with Sean Broderick right after the break. I'm Douglas Mason, CEO of Naturally Splendid, symbol NSP on the TSX Venture Exchange. Naturally Splendid is a biotechnology and consumer products company focused on the global cannabis and health markets. Naturally Splendid is expanding distribution in this rapidly growing market with products currently in Canada, the USA, South Korea, Germany, and Australia. To view our comprehensive company presentation and for more information, please visit our website at naturallysplendid.com. MGX Minerals is revolutionizing the new energy economy with patented lithium extraction technology replacing traditional solar evaporation using low-cost, low-energy nanofiltration. The first system of this paradigm shift technology is currently being commissioned. MGX Minerals trades on the CSE, symbol XMG, the OTCQB, symbol MGXMF, and Frankfurt, symbol 1MG. For more information, visit our website, mgxminerals.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Sean Broderick. Sean, do we expect oil to continue to pick up? It's been going up a little bit at a time for from its low. 
Well, it has been, but it also just recently ran into trouble. And that trouble uh, comes in a uh, Iran-shaped package, courtesy of the European Union, which has created a mechanism so that uh, people in Europe can now buy oil from Iran and uh, skirt U.S. sanctions. And the way they're able to do this is that the mechanism does not use U.S. dollars. This actually should send a shiver of fear through people who are long U.S. dollars. Because if the rest of the world figures out it doesn't need U.S. dollars to do uh, energy trades, that is actually, you know, quite serious. Along with that, we have other problems going on. Interestingly enough, the uh, U.S. seems to be getting into a tiff with Venezuela, uh, saying that it's not going to recognize the person currently in charge of that government and is going to recognize someone new. Venezuela sells us half a million barrels of oil per day, um, and so you would think that would support oil prices in the U.S. Instead, oil prices are going down, I think, because people are more worried about what's happening in Iran, in Europe, that kind of thing. That is really something major that people should keep on their radar. Uh, not so much this just one thing, but if someone else does it, you know, that could be really worrisome for the U.S. dollar. So definitely keep an eye on that. What about the trade situation between the U.S. and China? Is that going to improve? Oh, boy, you're asking the wrong guy with the wrong crystal ball for that one. Because they keep saying that things are going well, and they never come out with specifics. To me, that says that things are not going well because they can't agree on anything specific. And so that would tell me that there's more trouble to come. We're only a month and a half away, by the way, from the deadline to work out a deal with China. Now that deadline can be extended. People shouldn't panic too much. Nonetheless, if they don't come out with any specific agreements, like, say, in the next couple of weeks, people should start to get very nervous. That doesn't mean they will. Frankly, I have given up trying to predict this market because it, uh, it like, zooms higher when Larry Kudlow comes out and says something nice about the Chinese, and then over the weekend, his boss comes out and says, no, that's not happening. So... You have to wonder if people even in the White House know what's going on. They don't seem to agree with each other about what's going on with China. And as an investor, I'd find that kind of unsettling. Canada caught in the middle of uh, a dispute with China and the U.S. with the Huawei executive being held on bail here in Canada on an extradition request from the U.S. Is there any chance the U.S. could drop that and end this diplomatic row that's uh, seen innocent Canadians arrested in China? Anything is possible. President Trump could wave his hands and that could be gone tomorrow. However, if the FBI proceeds with their plans, which is to extradite that highway, um, I can't even say the name of the company right. Anyway, extradite that executive, then uh, I would think... That would kind of gum up the works of any kind of China trade deal because China really wants her let go. So, um, you know, we'll have to see how that goes. There, I, I think there are many more risks to this China trade deal than are being discounted by the market right now. Um, and uh, so we'll have to see if they can work it out. On the bullish side, it is in the interest of both companies to work, uh, excuse me, it is in the interest of both countries to work something out. But that doesn't mean they will. Uh, so we'll just have to see what actually rolls out. I'm just not terribly optimistic about the whole deal. We'll have more with Sean Broderick right after this. Grand Portage Resources recently completed the 2018 drill program on its 100% controlled Herbert Gold Discovery property located in the prolific Juno Belt in southeast Alaska. Drill results are expected through late 2018. Past drill results included numerous multi-ounce gold assays on multiple veins. Grand Portage trading symbols are GPG on the TSX Venture, GPTRF on the OTCQB, and GPB on Frankfurt. For more information, please visit our website, Grand portage.com don't miss out stay informed receive the howstreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts radio and articles delivered to your inbox sign up for the howstreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at howstreet.com welcome back we're speaking with sean broderick sean much movement in the uranium space right now any the Uranium space looks like it's fallen into a Rip Van Winkle uh, snooze. Now, I did hear today that the price of uranium, spot uranium, 
has actually edged up a little bit, but not very much. Certainly, many people, including me, were expecting more activity than this. Uh, but, you know, this might, this might be, well, actually it is. Uh, slow time of the year. Uh, we could see more as uh, the months progress. We could see more buying and uh, then see what happened. But right now, if you're looking for excitement, I wouldn't look in the uranium space. Of course, there are contrarians who say that's exactly when you look in the uranium space, when things aren't exciting, and they would have a point. Are we expecting agricultural commodities to pick up? Well, gosh, um, I've heard that um, despite uh, some assurances from the Chinese to the contrary, Chinese imports of, like, soybeans are still dead. And I should say imports from the U.S. They're buying tons of them from Brazil and Argentina and stuff like that. So, you know, uh, really the whole trade deal thing needs to be worked out. That would be a major point in the trade deal, in any trade deal would be a Chinese agreement to keep buying a lot of U.S. soybeans and other grains and stuff like that, pork, you name it. So maybe that'll happen, maybe it won't. I just think people are more optimistic on the trade deal. It's it's not that I'm saying that a trade deal will never get done. I just think that uh, in the next couple weeks, they need a lot more time to work on it, and so it'll get pushed back. Whether that rattles the market or not, that can be anybody's guess. Sean, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thanks very much. I had a great time. My guest has been Sean Broderick, Senior Editor for the TheWeissGroup.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. Find us on Twitter at HowStreet, our YouTube channel, Talk Digital Network. Questions for the show or from our guests like Sean can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com Radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com Radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.